because my goal as always is to take you from being a bystander, passive recipient of our broken healthcare system to a proactive, loving and self-accountable person. Today we shed light on the critical, one of the critical issues that seniors are facing. It's a very sensitive topic, but I feel is important for us to talk about because this is costing lives. Our topic is suicide among seniors. In this episode, we will look at the facts, discuss the contributing factors of why suicide is increasing among seniors, and what can we do? What can we do to help them? The suicide rate in this age group has increased by 16%. That means it's for every 100,000 seniors of this age group, comparing 2002 and 2017. The suicide rate has increased from 13.4 to 15.5 deaths per 100,000. As much as we are concerned of our young children battling mental health problems, I think our seniors are silently dealing with this deadly problem too. For young people, we know about the peer pressure, about the social media influence, about less parental guidance, common factors that's pushing our teenagers and young adults to commit suicide. But what about our senior population? What about them? What are the common factors that may contribute to why seniors are more prone to suicide? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Lifestyle Changer MD. I'm Dr. Adelita, your host for this other episode of Sunday Drive. The Sunday Drive is my weekly commitment to show up here and talk about important topics that we face, but unfortunately unaddressed to help improve our quality of life and especially our health. So Sunday Drive is also for me to deliver bite-sized medical or health information, but also mega doses of motivation because my goal as always is to take you from being a bystander, passive recipient of our broken healthcare system to a proactive, loving, and self-accountable person. If you are a senior or soon will be, or you know of somebody who is at the period of their life between retiring and not working, you need to hear this topic. Today, we shed light on the critical, one of the critical issues that seniors are facing. It's a very sensitive topic, but I feel is important for us to talk about because this is costing lives. Our topic is suicide among seniors. Even if you're not a senior, this will be very helpful if you are living or if you know you have a family member that you're caring for who are in this prime time of their life. In this episode, we will look at the facts, discuss the contributing factors of why suicide is increasing among seniors, and what can we do? What can we do to help them? Join me and stick around because we're going to address this important topic with empathy, with compassion, and with a drive to create a positive change to build a world where every person, not just seniors, feels respected, connected, and supported. But before going to that, I want to share why or what is the back story of why I chose this topic for today. So here's the story. Two days ago, while we're having dinner with my family, just me, my husband, boys, my 15-year-old twin boys brought up this topic, shared with us that they've been reading the rate of suicide in South Korea, especially celebrities, is on the rise. Now, I know that they're into entertainment. I think if you have a teenager, you know that they are into Korean movies, Korean celebrities, your Korean 
entertainment in general. So they pointed out that that rich guy, that actor who portrayed a rich guy in the movie, Korean movie, The Parasite or Parasite, that actually garnered four Academy Awards and that we watched a month ago in Netflix, they said that guy, that rich guy in the movie committed suicide. You can imagine my parenting instinct immediately kicked in. It's a sensitive topic, not comfortable to talk about, just like sex education, but I know I want to understand what's in their mind. So I asked them what they thought about suicide. What made them commit? What made these celebrities or these people commit suicide or commit that act? When celebrities, for example, in that example, they brought it, seem to have it all. Fam the, the fame, the, the money, influence, right? Why would they still commit suicide? And I was surprised at the answer that they gave me. One word, freedom. My son answered, they don't have freedom, mom. That made me think of the other demographics of people that don't have freedom. The people I serve mostly are seniors. Seniors don't have much freedom like when they were less old. Agree? So it made me look at the statistics on that same night. I went to the internet and search. And this is what I found. What we're seeing here is just one of the graphs in the 2019 senior report. And one of their findings is this. Progress has been noted in reducing premature deaths among young seniors, and that's 65 years old. And there were, even though there were fewer deaths uh, of people aged 65 to 74, fewer premature death, the suicide rate in this age group has increased by 16%. Let's put that into perspective. That means is for every 100,000 seniors of this age group, comparing 2002 and 2017, the suicide rate has increased from 13.4 to 15.5 deaths per 100,000. So two more people are dying of suicide in this age group between this term or period. Another way to look at this statistic is the number of suicides has risen from 2,460 to 4,614 over this time period. As much as we are concerned of our young children battling mental health problems, I think our seniors are silently dealing with this deadly problem too. For young people, we know about the peer pressure, about the social media influence, about less parental guidance, common factors that's pushing our teenagers and young adults to commit suicide. But what about our senior population? What about them? What are the common factors that may contribute to why seniors are more prone to suicide? That's what we're gonna talk about today. And then later, what can we do? What can they do? Okay, so based on existing research and, you know, studies, this is what we know. There are five, five common factors that contribute to seniors to commit suicide. Number one, physical health issues, medical health problems, basically. As a medical doctor, in my opinion, 
this is the number one contributing factor. Seniors unfortunately become the host of chronic diseases or recipients of chronic diseases, not just one, but chronic diseases that often force them to face pain, to face disability that can significantly impact their quality of life and lead to feelings of hopelessness. Let's take diabetes, for example. If you're a senior and you have had diabetes for years or decades that's not controlled, you could get blind, you could get amputation, actually you could lose leg, you could suffer from nerve pain, you could make your kidneys quit working, you could not move because you suffered from a stroke and many, many more, just because one chronic disease that's not controlled. Let's say you're on dialysis, let's say, right? Your kidneys quit working and so your doctor said, okay, we need to get on dialysis. So you're on dialysis two to three times a week. That means you can't travel. You don't have freedom to travel. Your life revolves around the hospital. And so if you used to live a very active lifestyle, you're a traveler, you're an explorer, when you were younger, the physical limitation set by the disease can easily throw you into deep depression. So physical health issues is the most common factor. What's the second? Social isolation. As we age, we experience loss of friends, loss of family members, or social connections. And this leads to loneliness. This leads to isolation. Loneliness does not mean being alone. Because you can be a senior, an old person living with your daughter or your son, being surrounded with 10 you know, grandchildren, but you could also still feel lonely. So when we say social isolation, it's not just physical. Social isolation in, uh, in elderly or in seniors is when a senior is in a situation where he experienced a lack of meaningful interaction, meaningful connection. The key word here is meaningful. Studies have shown that lack of meaningful connection or interaction has been linked to health conditions, including heart attack, including stroke. That's cardiovascular problems in general, which is number one killer disease worldwide. You could have cognitive decline and, and even premature death just being socially isolated, which is equal to no meaningful interaction. That's number two. Number three, mental health challenges. Many seniors are undiagnosed for conditions like um, depression, uh, anxiety, cognitive disabilities, such as dementia. These are common in older adults and can easily risk a person to suicidal ideation thoughts leading to suicide. Number four, financial stress. Seniors may face financial difficulties due to retirement, uh, due to medical expenses, due to limited income and these are all contributing to feelings of despair and worthlessness. And mind you, the number one biggest expense for seniors is not their cost of living. It's their health, their illness. What about number five factor? Loss and grief. The loss of a spouse, the loss of close friends or independence, the loss of independence 
can be a significant stressor for seniors and may contribute to suicidal ideation. So there you have your five factors. And go over this. If you have a family member, go over all these things with them and investigate. Now, what can you do? What can we do for them? If you are a senior listening to me now, I invite you to ask yourself, what can I do? The good news is you certainly can do a lot of things, a lot of things. That is all to decrease your risk for suicide. You must understand, though, that you are not going to go through 10, 20, 30 things to do because that's going to overwhelm you and end up not doing anything at all. So let's simplify things, shall we? Okay. Because all we want to do is to take action, no matter how small that action step is. This is in the order of significance. I have three things in my list in order of significance. Now, I don't know your history. I don't know your situation. If you're listening to me now, please know that this is just a guide, not a medical advice. But it's very important that you work closely with your doctor. Now, what are these three things? Number one, if you're having suit, if you are having active social, I mean, suicidal ideation or thoughts, you need to go to the emergency room, get the phone, call 911, or call, call the family. You have to be taken to the hospital, check in as soon as possible. If you're act, having active social, so suicidal thoughts. Now, don't delay. Don't delay. If not having any suicidal thoughts, but they're keep, they've been recurring, consult your doctor. Go see your doctor as soon as possible. This could mean you are clinically depressed or suffering from medical conditions that mimic depression. And these are treatable. Okay? So, ask for help, number one. Number two, revitalize your body with healthy foods. And I mean this, regardless of what medical conditions you have, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, heart disease, have, and potentially reverse those conditions. Imagine your blood sugar getting controlled. And then you have more energy. And then your nerve pain is going away. And your vision starts clearing. And you get to keep your legs. You get to keep your kidneys. Your heart working strong. Your brain is ever as young as you are. Imagine that. By just changing what you put on your plate and into your mouth. If you don't know what the whole food plant-based nutrition is, I invite you to download my free ebook by going to my website, theplanetalita.com. Now, you can also message us directly if you're in this YouTube, Facebook, whatever, wherever you are listening. Reach out to us, send us a message, and we'll forward you the information about the whole food plant-based nutrition. Okay? Number three that you're going to do, reach out and connect. Reach out and connect. Make a list of people who, when you talk to them, makes you feel what? Connected. Makes you feel valued and included in their circle. The key, my friends, to social connection is not the number, not the number of friends you have or how often. You connect or interact with them. You know what's the key point of social connection? It's two words, inclusion and positive emotion. They don't need to be someone who's related to you by blood. They just need to be this people who make you feel you belong, make you feel happier and joyful 
positive feelings are generated when you're around with these people. They are your people. Do not hesitate to walk away from toxic relationships, from negative arguments. Turn your back. Social isolation means meaningful relationships or interaction. So they've got to be this people being your life is valuable, is important, and there are people who care and want to help you. I hope that I've given you a strong dose of health education and that can help you make better dietary and lifestyle choices. All my videos are recorded and available on my website, Facebook group, YouTube channel. Now, if you can't watch me, but you can listen to me while you're working, while you're exercising, you are, you know, maybe cooking and cleaning your house. You can listen to my podcasts in Spotify and Apple Podcast. For all these social media platforms, just type the Lifestyle Changer MD and you will find us. You can listen to us. You can replay as often as possible, but don't forget to share. Okay? I'm here live in my Facebook group every Sunday. That's 8 a.m. Pacific time or 8, no, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And to my Kababayans in the Philippines, that's Sunday, 11 p.m. I'll see you next week.